the seagulls follow Chola. It's because they think sardines will be thrown into the sea. Thank you very much. <laughs> Here we go, a boysy boss rolls back in. It's Friday night, it's the Double Doon Show. I know everyone's feeling a bit low, but I don't do feeling low. Yeah, we might have to critique the performance a wee bit, but you know what? The weekend is here. It's time to have fun. It's the boysy boss. It's the Double Doon Show. And as always, luckily for all of yous, I don't do the Double Doon Show on my own. The whole double in Double Doon Show means I've got a guest. And this week, it's another regular viewer, because we're the only YouTube platform that's of a Celtic kind that brings on the average Joe. Not that this is any average Joe, but we bring on any viewer, any bus passenger to come on and talk Celtic. Don't kid on, we're ITK. We don't kid on, we're all in the know. We just bring on normal people to talk Celtic, because that is how it's meant to work when you're a football fan, even more so when you're a Celtic fan. Hey, it's time to introduce Phil McGinley. Yeah. All right. Hello, Boise. Hello, everyone in the chat. And to Kenny, who's got his comment up on the screen just now, I'm quite confident we're going to put a smile back on his face. I'm pretty confident of that, mate. You know it, mate. I mean, the thing right. is, we are going to talk about the football, right? And <laughs> yep. there's no ways to say the football was amazing. There's just not a way. But do you know what? We're going to we're not going to spin it in a uh, you know, a Boris Johnson kind of way. We're going to just, we're going to look at the bigger picture at times. We're going to talk about other wee caveats we're finding positivity from. Mm -hmm. And none of us are going to start acting as if we know best. At the end of the day, everything will be caveated with the manager's done no bad so far. But we'll get to all that. We'll get to all that. Yeah. Phil, before we start, I've always got to say a big thank you to fanboyfootball.com. You know, Yep. They are sponsors of the show. Mm -hmm. Big thank you to everyone who donated in the super chat last night. That was wild. I know there was some folks saying they don't want to donate to YouTube. There is a PayPal link in the bottom, but I swear to God, this show is not going to become about all that, right? I'm more than happy doing this as a hobby. It's fun. You know, I've yep. got a full-time job. I'm saving like a bastard, but I just, you know, to get out of the shed that I'm currently in, you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, <laughs> but anyway, this is the Double Doon Show. We're going to talk Celtic, and obviously it's on the back of our, our, our poor result, so we will talk about all that, but mm -hmm. we also will be talking about a wee look ahead to the weekend's fixture, as we always do, and then of course there's the quiz. You don't understand, 
I've realised I don't understand. <laughs> Nobody understands. But it adds to the chaos of what is the Boise bus. First it's part of the charm. Phil McGinley. <laughs> How the devil are you, mate? I am not too bad, mate. Not too bad at all. Um, quite incredibly, because obviously you've been on a good run since you've uh, started the show. Everyone that's came on has had to talk about positive results. And I've joined the short straw. I am the first guest to come on and talk about a bad result. So, yeah. That's but true. I also thought as well, um, I can't have that. So I've actually got a surprise for you tonight, mate. I've actually brought something along Ooh. with me. To, I'm mixing right. up a bit, mate. I'm changing the game for guests, mate. Russell right. Boyce, you look like a man that likes a bit of Celtic trivia, mate. You like, hey, hey, wait, wait. <laughs> no, no, no. It's all right. It's all right. It's not, I'm not totally stealing your thunder, but I brought a wee brain teaser, a couple of brain teasers. To, I'll put them out there, and at the end of the show, we can go back to the answers. It's one to get the, the viewers thinking as they go along, and yourself as well. Hope I don't throw you too much off your game. So, no, no, two... no, 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 no. I can handle it. No, no, exactly. So the two trivia questions I've got, Celtic related. The first one is Celtic and the World Cup question, right? There are six players in history of the World Cup who have scored a goal at the tournament and were contracted to Celtic at the time. Can you name the six players? And the other one is Celtic have played eight competitive matches in English towns and cities. Can you name all the towns and cities? So what was the there first you go. One? The, first one again, the World Cup. Uh, there's been six players who've scored at the World Cup who've been contracted to Celtic when they scored. Uh, can you name the six players? And the other one is eight English towns and cities that Celtic have played competitive games in, not friendlies. But I say, I'll put the questions out there. We'll come back to them at the end of the show. Give people uh, time to think. Yeah. But Phil, Phil, see when you say it, it's like a surprise, right? I'm expecting mm. like gold. I'm expecting like <laughs> an Adidas tracky top. I'm oh, expecting man. maybe, you know, a mod. That's a practice if you yesterday. get them right. I'll send it but, to you in the post, mate. Uh, fucking, fucking trivia to pick on my head. Um, <laughs> I love I love people who say terrible jacket. This is the thing last in 1967, 2002. It's banter. You'll realise it's because it's a quiz. And what we've Quite done sure. today, Gary McDowell, are you hosting a game show? It's the quiz at the end. So every week I wear a blazer. I know it goes up. Everyone's the fashion police. I would love to see the curtains of some of these people film. It's like me off how I look, by the oh, way. Man. I, I, I said to you, man, before we came on, like, um, when I had to come on this show, I'm, I'm not afraid to put my face on the camera. Uh, the only thing that's scaring me is a quiz at the end. That's literally the only thing, like, honestly, terrified. But I'll probably be fine by the time we get to it, mate. Be ready you for will it. be, mate. You'll be well versed. <laughs> the thing is, as well, about tonight, and I didn't tell you this, Phil, off air, and we did have a good chat off air, mm. but we're actually live on Twitter and Facebook tonight as well. Just right. because I think the Double Dune show, maybe people are thinking it's like some sort of maybe quiz show. I don't fucking know. But I think, <laughs> I think uh, tonight we'll branch out a bit, man. So okay. we're on a few different platforms. Welcome aboard the Boise yeah. bus. Let's talk some Celtic, man. Um, Let's do it, mate. Because last night is one of those nights. It's going to go, it's going to go, you know, I like Paolo's comment there, by the way. You're entering a dimension of time, sight and sound, but also a mind of mind, a dimension beyond the twilight zone. You just entered the double dune. Bro, I like that. He sold it really like well that. there. I like it. I can't come up with stuff like that. I can't come up with stuff like that. Yeah. Now, the aftermath of last night against Bodo hmm. Glimp, where did the display come from and what went wrong? That sounds all negative. I don't want anyone to piss their pants over mm. this. We got beat 3-1 at home in Europe in the third yep. tier of Europe, uh, European competition. We have to ask the question, <laughs> what went wrong? And Phil, luckily on the Double Dune show, I could put all this on you, mate. What went wrong? Sorry, mate. Um, yes, I was at the game last night. Um I was the misfortune of being at it because yeah, it wasn't exactly the best experiences. Um, I said to my dad on the way over, we're driving home. The radio had announced the starting lineup, and the first thing that flagged up. I know you spoke about it on post match pitch last night, and pretty much every other podcast has talked about it. The glaring midfield issue, um, O'Reilly and Rogic starting. I said to my dad right away. I went, "Does that's not going to work? The balance there is off." I don't know if Hitati had had a knock. If it was just a tactical move by Ange to you know, we've had Hattie out um, mm -hmm. because yeah, the, you could just see right away we were so overrun in the middle of the park. 
and then just some of the defensive mistakes were just absolutely insane. Like I know that um I always appreciate when you use the word slobber knocker on here, but last night definitely wasn't a slobber knocker. But I was thinking another JR expression, the one where he's going about will someone just stop the damn match? Because generally last night there were points where I was like, <laughs> just, just get me out of here, man. Like honestly, like, what am I watching here? I can't believe it. Although the strange thing is, I can and I cannot believe it at the same time because I've read this chapter before. And I've seen so many Celtic fans in the last 24 hours saying it on um, Twitter and other social media. Like, how can we keep finding ourselves doing the same thing? We get to this sort of stage of European football. We play a team that, you know, financially and in terms of stature aren't, you know, on a, on a level playing field was. And we keep coming a cropper. I mean, it's also depressing as well. If, when you think back to, like, the earlier 2000s, how much a fortress mm -hmm. Celtic mm -hmm. Park was, what a weapon that was for us. And now teams in the last few years, you know, we've had teams like Mulder, Ferris Farosh, last night, obviously, Bodo Glint, uh, Kludge. They've all come to Celtic Park and they beat us. Kludge. And it's Kludge, <laughs> Kludge, however it's pronounced. Kludge, yeah. Oh, they Kludge it. <laughs> Aye, so it's just like, it's baffling, but there was just a whole combination of things went wrong last night. And yeah, it's just, um, obviously, we're going to uh, dissect it, but... Also, another thing I think that um, we seem to fall victim to as well, with all teams uh, that come to Celtic Park, we need more shithousers in our team, guys that can rise to the, the bait that's getting put out there. Last night, mm. Bodo Glint were very good at you know, throwing the fishing line out there and reeling us right in with some of the play acting and stuff like that. I mean, the second goal that they scored comes as a result. The boy's down for how many? Like two, three minutes or something. He's lying down, waiting for the ball to go out. It doesn't come out. He just pops right back up. Skins Greg Taylor, cuts inside, gets past Scarlett Starfelt. Nice wee ball into the middle, second goal. And it's just like, man, mm -hmm. so many other players just were just taking the bait from them last night. And I think we need to start adopting that mentality because, again, there was just, again, people's reactions on Twitter. I've seen people say, but, but we're Celtic. We don't do things like that. We don't lower ourselves to that level. I think it's time to start fighting fire with fire, mate. Honestly, I think we need to do it from time to time. Because this will keep happening. This will keep yep. happening to us. Yep. Well, let's let's pick up there, Phil, a couple of points that you make. And I think first and mm. foremost, we'd be remiss of us not to say Bodo Glimt were a good team last night, right? 100 percent They were they've done their yeah. homework on us. And mm -hmm. we just said I think Celtic would have been a bit shell shocked that a team Definitely. Yep. Celtic Celtic Fied them. I'm trying to think of like electrified Celtic fied them. Something mm. like that. Anyway, basically they did what Celtic have done to a lot of teams this year. They did to us, and we did not know how to react. And it it, mm -hmm. it took us a while. We were dazed and confused. I think in that first half, whereas normally we're rampant. Now, the other side of it is the, what, what what were you just saying there about European performances? What did you just say there? I've lost my train of thought already because there's a couple of points I wanted to come back uh, to. I went all in right at the start, by the way. I did go quite I mean, quite a That's lot right. of points there. But no, I just talked about things like the the way a lot of teams come to Celtic Park and a lot of shit yes. that goes on and we just seem to take the bait every time. I've got it, it's, I've got it. Man, yep. Now, 2003, we lost the UEFA Cup final. Mm-hmm. And now the narrative will always be diving, cheating, bastards. To mm -hmm. me... They were just streetwise, Porto, and I'm not... Yeah. I don't get the moral high ground because at the end of the day, I want trophies, trophies, mm -hmm. trophies. And yep. I think that Celtic team, for as much of a... Aside of a lot of players in the 30s at that point, which I was going to come to uh, your point mm -hmm. about players maybe not being savvy enough or whatever you want yeah. to call it, and we need to adopt that tactic. Mm -hmm. The one thing I would say is we've also been on the other side of the coin back in 2003 where we had... A group of players that one of their brilliant traits were how streetwise they were. Yeah, totally. And yet Porto took it to another level, and for mm. whatever reason, I think we we bought it a wee bit. You know mm -hmm. that way. I'm looking yep. at I'm looking at examples in other sports. Like now, obviously, there's a big fight tomorrow night. For example, Phil Kelbrook <laughs> and Amir Khan, mm. and I think Kelbrook's far like should be way and far the favourite. But I watch the gloves are off. And I'm watching a bear can get in his head, and I'm going, yeah. You should know better, Kel, than falling for it. But now you look like a lost mm. little puppy. And yep. I think Celtic, it is sport, right? And it's all about, I just think Celtic have to be able, firstly, to take a punch, right? Mm. I think they got a bloody nose when they lost that, 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 that first goal. And 
sadly, when they lost the goal, the equalising goal in Petordre, they bounced back like champions. Yep. But in Europe, they still looked as frail as before. Now, there might be a lot of facets to why the display wasn't, you know, up there. Mm -hmm. And we can discuss that. But where do you lie on the display, Phil, in terms of, let's talk about the personnel, the selection, the formation, the setup, the, the mentality of the team? I, I am not asking for you to pick holes in everyone. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, yeah. what aspects of it do you think went wrong? Because at the end of the day, the result did go wrong, whether we like it mm. or not. Now, we all know it's the first time the results went wrong in a long time. And this Boise mm. bus, it's the first defeat since this Boise bus revved up. And I yep. can only apologise for that as well. Um, and I'm glad you noticed that, Phil. That shows someone's yeah. been listening. <laughs> <laughs> let's look at those aspects and you tell me where you think it went wrong in terms of the actual display. Let's say uh, midfield is so huge in the game. Uh, most managers always tell you it's where games can be won and lost. And I just, I say, putting two number 10s in there, they'll now we also use the squad numbers to describe uh, the positions. You know, O'Reilly and Rogic, one of the things that we keep talking about is how similar they are. Like, oh, it's great that we've got O'Reilly now because if Rogic doesn't play, we've got a player that can plug into that position. They even look Brilliant. Like. They even look alike. <laughs> yep. And then they play the two of them together. And it did just feel like. You had five players on the park who were very attack-minded, um, and then just a big gap between that. And McGregor was still doing everything he does. He was still going deep and showing for the ball. He wasn't hiding away. But you need that extra person in the middle, and Hitati seems to be the number eight, the box-to-box -box midfielder, the guy that gets up mm -hmm. and down. And that was just so easily missing. They were cutting through us. Like, the first couple of minutes, I think we had a chance in the very first minute, the one that zipped across the goal, Maida never got to it. And you're like, okay, we're yeah. on the front foot here right away. And then they scored after five minutes, and it was we, we were shell shocked. It was dead. Like I felt even before they scored, I felt like the atmosphere was really off last night. And I know at some point later on we're going to talk about sort of apathy towards the competition, but I did feel in the stadium last night it wasn't. It was a full house, but there was points where I was just like, it doesn't feel like a full house. There's just something not right tonight, and it was like the omens were bad before we even kicked off last night. I don't know how it came across on the TV or watching it. But I felt in the stadium it wasn't what it could have been. And, mm -hmm. you know, one of the things that a team, when they come to Celtic Park, they want to do is kill the crowd because that is a huge factor. And I think the crowd is did it? seem a bit... I, I, well, yeah, I do, I do think so. When they, they can... When you look when at the record the now, though... And What's that? When you look at the record now, though, how big a factor I, is, the, is it playing is, these days? Is it a case of teams are now doing it more often and that's what's caused it to happen? Because I see back in the, the 2000s and so forth, like mm -hmm. we, were, we were actually schooling teams at Celtic Park. They were coming in, nobody was getting any points off us in the Champions League or in like knockout stages of UEFA Cup and that. We were beating everybody. But yeah, it just seems like teams have just gotten wise in the last few years of how to mm -hmm. um, kill the crowd really quickly. Um, I think there can be a wee bit of impatience in amongst Celtic fans at times as well, where it's like, I mean, I would love us to turn up and win four or five now every single game but last night we were showing them way too much of the ball they're playing it around the crowd are getting a bit um on top of them and that's not going to help but yeah it just everything that could go wrong if you had a book there was everything you can do wrong in this game we literally covered everything in that book last night it was just nothing was going away i think it was at the 70th minute before we got our first shot at goal and i think the stranger thing is they had three shots on target maybe all night and scored all three of them which is mental because mm -hmm. Joe Hart didn't really have to make any uh, big saves, but he had to pick the ball in the net three times. No. It's <laughs> insane. So just a clinical team. And yeah, they do deserve a lot of credit. I mean, because they are, there, there might have been a bit of naivety from the squad, the management team, the fans, whatever. But, you know, a team that's, you know, won, they won their three home games, I believe, and drew the three away games in their group. And of course they had the 6-1 win over Roma. I don't know, man. It's, it's like, I don't think you can afford to take a team like that lightly, and there might be a wee bit of that. Um, yeah. Yeah, but it's just, um, and just another wee thing I just wanted to bring up as well, that is really mm -hmm. frustrating. And <laughs> I just can't believe this, like, set pieces, right? So see, a few weeks ago, we played uh, Hearts at Tyne Castle, and I don't know if I imagined this, but I remember on the night, O'Reilly made his debut, and I can remember him taking corners pretty much all night, and he was putting in good balls every time. Okay, he didn't score off any, but I can remember on Twitter on that, but a lot of people saying, oh, he delivers a really good ball. See the amount of short corners that we take that go to nothing? Because my feeling is, if you're doing a short corner 
it's an actual set piece move that you've practiced because most of the time you'll just put it in the middle. But we're playing so many short ones, and there was one last night, midway through the second half, that mm-hmm. Jota took quick that O'Reilly wasn't ready for and ended up stumbling on the ball. And actually, well, they should have got a free kick forward. I actually went out for a throw in, but it's just like, why are we doing so many set pieces? What are they practicing at Lennox Town when it comes to a set piece? We are, I, I think it's been reported, well, we've spoken about many times before. This goes back longer than just Ange's time. We've always been really bad at corners for a good while now. Like, yep. Yep, I we agree with that. Them. We, I say t- taking them short to me, unless you've got like a really good tactic of what you're going to do with that short corner, uh, it just feels like a waste to me. It really does. I'm, I'm going to give you another example of where this patient sort of play pisses me off, right? Now, hmm. I get everything's going rosy, so I don't know why, you know, I know people are going to think you're being all negative. Look, there's a no. whole show ahead. We're talking oh, about one performance. <laughs> but the referee's given us right this extra opportunity at, uh, was it full time at half time I'm trying to think. I think it was a full time and this phase of play we kept allowed to be able to play mm. and rather than just getting the ball in the box we had the opportunity mm. we're stand, we've yeah. got the ball in plenty of space it's still this passy passy yeah. stuff I'm going what's the fucking point here like if the ref yeah. blows right now and you've blown a 20 second opportunity just to get the ball in the box now I appreciate mm. it's not the exact same as the corner stuff, but I'm going mm. to just shows you that for whatever mm. reason, seems to be everything needs to be built up. The ball can't be walked in there all the time. Yeah. Sometimes totally. we need to go um, more direct at times. And and, yep. and, make, and capitalise as well, Phil, on these set-piece mm. opportunities. I remember a yeah. set-piece under Martin O'Neill was like a penalty. I remember mm-hmm. foot, yep. football, football has moved on. I get mm. it. Football has yeah. moved on. But plan A, right? If it's not working, can't always be do plan A again. And I no. also think now, looking at the squad Celtic have, there are variants that we can do in our game. There are different ways to play. I think we've mm. seen a wee bit of that. Anyway, the fact of the matter is the display for me wasn't up to par. I think no. the manager takes his share of the blame. I think the players take their share of the blame. Um, I think we move on though. From mm, from my yeah. point of view, oh, yeah. um, from my point of view, with that that night last night, if you told me it would be the only defeat in 2022, mm. and we'd have won every other match, and I probably took it to be completely yep. honest with you, and um, because I would know that if we've won every match, we'd be either top of the league or very very mm. close to it. So yep. I get all that side of it. However, one other thing I want to talk about Europe, and I kind of hinted at this last night, Phil. Mm-hmm. We've played in three tiers of European football this year, believe it or not. Now <laughs> it's the Champions oh. League. Yes, yep. it was a yes, it was a, a qualifier, but that kind of makes it an easier Champions League fixture. Um now, yep. despite the highlighting there in these three tiers, it's 18 years since Celtic qualified through a knockout tie. Now, before we were you're panning the team, panning the manager. This mm. ain't, can't all be on Ange when you look at a record that's no. lasted that long. Uh, it's quite frightening. What I will say, though, is, as well, because I've got another interesting angle on this. Mm. Now, at the start of this season, when we lost to, for example, Mitchell and over two legs, it was mm. because we'd had all this time off and weren't up to scratch. When we play yeah. Bodo Glimt, it's because they've had all this time off yeah. and, uh, and been able to size us up. What is the advantage here? I mean, would you rather be in the role of fixtures that, that we were last night or that Mitchell and were when they played us at the start of the season? Mm-hmm. We can't have it both ways, though. But irrespective of just that wee point, that's just to be add-on. Yeah. 18 years is a legacy thing for me. I can't mm-hmm. all be on Ange. I think the club, as a menta- there's a mentality about the club that steps right from the very, very top that mm-hmm. we're lucky to be in Europe. Yeah, it's um, I think part of it as well is a mental thing, psychological thing, uh, because it doesn't help that the media would, you know, it seems to be getting brought up now because I didn't realise it'd been that many years when you put it in black and white like that. It's like, geez, oh, you can't can't believe it's been that long, right? It reminds me of the whole we couldn't win an away game in the Champions League, and every season that would go by, 
this would keep getting brought up in the media and so forth. And eventually, and that just passes from one team to another. And yep. eventually, was it Lenny finally got it against Spartak Moscow, wasn't it? Big Samaras's last minute header, I think, was the one that broke the duct. But that was how many attempts before we finally got one? Yep. And I feel like now this is becoming a thing now every year when we get to this stage, this is going on. So now, I mean, the likelihood of us getting through, so we'll probably talk about that at some point, but it, this time next year, we'll be talking 19 years since the last time we won one. So a bit of psycho- there's got to be a psychological side to it as well. And the more it keeps getting brought up by uh, the media and so forth, it's going to get in the players' heads eventually. You know, these are things that are going to get to them, um, you know, even though we bring in new players and so forth. But of course, another thing that would be easy to say is just money. And um, the structure of how UEFA have structured the competitions, like leagues that weren't fashionable 20 something years ago, have become powerhouses. Uh, and yes, I do Potter? have an NWO t shirt on tonight. I do I indeed. Thought, that is minty, yes. mate. That is I've also got the I've also got the black and red one as well, but I've got the black and white NWO no, one tonight. That's the right one, man. No, I love that's that. the right one. That's the OG uh, NWO, definitely. Um, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. Speaking of New World Order, money. I was talking money and corruption in UEFA. So mm-hmm. there you go, a good link there. Um, but yeah, like I say, like twenty years ago, like some of the teams that if we draw on a team like say Sparta Prague, twenty years ago, you would be like. You'd, you know, you, you've barely heard of teams like that, right? But obviously, last year we played them in the Europa League, um, and they absolutely scored us. These teams have just got better, and I think there's still a bit of naivety around it as well when it comes to Celtic in general. That we just, you know, maybe we just think we're just going to roll up and beat them. Um, it's just mm-hmm. as, as a tough one to, to but, get the ball off because, but it's a long time though. Let's be honest, Phil. This I know, isn't, I know, and you look back now, mm. I think. You were talking about Celtic Park being a fortress, and mm-hmm. you start thinking about 18 years, you ain't getting the negative results <laughs> you've had at home in that time. Yep. I mean, you start going, fortress what? I've actually got a wee, as usual, a wee throw me thought on it, right? Mm-hmm. Now, see, when you used to play, and it used to be Champions League, I don't remember in the UEFA Cup, there was a theme song for it where they had to line up. But when it was Champions it wasn't. League, mm-hmm. right? So you would line up. Mm-hmm. That is, what is it, Zadok the, the Priest? would play but mm. after that the celtic song would start and i have a yeah. sneaky feeling right when you listen to the europa league uh, songs now the champions league really mm. for us i think it changed about 10 years ago where that has to be clearly there must be some rule that's yes. the last song so mm. i even think those we and i'm doing wrong i'm scraping the barrel a bit but i <laughs> do think stuff like that's played a part because I think you're talking about Fortress Celtic, and I'm going, but it was mayhem. Clubs are coming yeah. to Celtic Park, and it was intimidating as fuck. Well. Now, yeah. unfortunately, and people can deny this all they want, but a lot of it is to do with poor results at Celtic Park. It's a tourist mm. attraction. It is a fucking tourist attraction, because folk want the, they want to see yeah. you never walk alone, and then they also know, do you know they love it? Because they're in a chance of winning. They mm. know they're in a chance of winning. Um, now, I just feel... Like, in Europe, Celtic have took their eye off the ball when they had a decade run at having yep. their eye firmly on that ball, Phil. Mm. And I don't think it's any coincidence that now when we're in the third fucking tier of European football, <laughs> you know... When you say all like, that. We're the third tier of European football, and genuinely now it's, you're a numpty for suggesting we could win that. I'm uh, like, right, no. well, yeah. how long does this standard get allowed to drop before... Someone yeah. wakes up and grabs us by the balls again and says, Do you know what? It's unacceptable as not to qualify for the group stage of the Champions League, it's particularly when you look at the battles of 10 years and see if the last 10 years haven't got us in a position to be a regular qualifier for the Champions League. Then shame on you. And it's no time mm. to talk that. And that's the way I see it. Celtic is nowhere near have the advantage that they should have to qualify for yep. these terms because they see it as this bonus ball. But what happens with that mentality, Phil, is the bonus ball starts becoming, oh, we competed in the Europa League, we came third. And now they can go, well, the bonus ball is we went to the, the third tier of European football. Maybe the fans will <laughs> think they'll win that. And let's be honest, right. we couldn't we couldn't sell out the second tier of Europa League football under Ronnie Dyla. Mm. Now, yep. because we actually did believe we might be a force in the third tier of European football, that was pretty much a sellout last night. And we fell mm. on our faces again. It's time yep. for that to be reflected upon and looked mm. at. And as I, I can't emphasize enough, for me, 
It's a legacy issue, mm. you know, not yep. on Ange Postacoglu whatsoever. He's just seen the same movie we've been watching mm. time yep. and time again. But the only, the only time it wasn't thus, incredibly, was under Neil Lennon for spell, which Thanks. no one, which yep. everyone would find fanciful now. But that's the honest truth. Um, I, our Celtic as a club, Phil. Have they took their eye off the ball with Europe? And you were talking about other mm. leagues there and the money the money side and stuff. Mm. But we're being caught up left, right and centre by oh. things like, you know, the Norwegian League, for example, there. Yep. But I mean, it was the Swedish League six, uh, six seven years ago, the Malmo match. Malmo. Uh, the Malmo ties. Polish yeah. matches against Liga Warsaw, where we, we got through yep. uh, in the back door. These aren't mm. leagues, really, that when you're as big a club as Celtic, we should be worrying about, oh, well, they're, they're ever growing as well. Why aren't we growing to remain at a level yeah. above them? What's your thoughts on that? I, I don't know if all the times we played Rosenborg recently maybe clouded people's judgment. Ah, we, we've beat Rosenborg a few times. We'll beat Bodo Glint because they're from the same league, obviously. Um, I don't know if that maybe clouded some people's judgment, but it's, it's, it's mad when you just think about how far that you can get with some leagues. Like I say, the Russian league, for instance, obviously a lot of money there and so forth. Like We played Zenit St. Petersburg a few years ago at the second round of the Europa League. I say, if you played them like 20 years ago, you wouldn't even know who's in St. Petersburg were, but they've just got to a point now where they've passed by us. But then, yeah, you're right about teams like, well, leagues like the Norwegian League, the Swedish League. We should still have enough to get through them. We should. Uh, That's a brilliant quote. Ah, uh, yeah. And Monty's spot on. He Always is does. spot on. Because right. that is, see, when you look at that, you're going, he was a lying bastard. It was mm. nowhere near it. It was all about are we generating the profits guaranteed every year? Mm. If they get in the CL and we've got a wee miracle worker doing a bit for us, happy days. Brendan mm. Rogers gets in two years in a row and he still won't get back. I mean, no. it's frightening no. to think of the missed opportunity so far. But what I would yeah. also, I'd also caveat it with is, under Postacoglu, I think we've got a manager who wants to make an impact in Europe. He does. Yep. I th I don't think he's at Celtic just for the domestic league. What I like about Poster Colgate, I think, is different mm. from the likes of mm. Brendan Rodgers, for example, is he's not a Celtic as a stepping stone to the PL. He's looking at Celtic as his own gateway, his own avenue to Europe's Premier Club competition and him actually making an impact on that. And it's high time Celtic making him uh, an impact on that. My only concern, Phil, and this is I'm going to leave it on this, right? Mm -hmm. um, on, 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 we're going to go to another debate um, <laughs> about cup competitions. But mm -hmm. I just hope that the board haven't looked at Posta Coglu's result last night. Say we go out in the tie and think, well, mm -hmm. we backed you in January. Mm -hmm. Backed you with, what, three more million pounds, four million pounds. And mm -hmm. they then put the brakes on what yeah. we've all felt has been a positive recruitment drive. So mm -hmm. that interests me as well, that domestic success might not always be enough for this board mm -hmm. to back the manager because we've seen that time and time again. But I'll leave that on that note. Mm -hmm. I want to know now the viewers' point of view on this because Feed the Bear, for example, I love Feed the Bear. He's a great, mm -hmm. great contributor in the comments. He's just sound yep. as fuck. We all know it. You know it. We all know he's the soundest yep. guy. He even watches the stream whilst just listening to Rebel songs. He's, he can't even hear me, but he just keeps it on anyway. Well, Ed, Man has got his priorities right. But he has made it absolutely clear he does not give two hoots about the Conference League. Now, what mm. I would say to that is yep. if it's all just about the league, and you know, realistically, there's four tournaments Celtic are still in, and I'm saying in the banner there, we're hanging by a thread in the Europa, the Europa Conference mm. League, right? But yep. we could still win potentially four tournaments. Rank them as a fan because I'm getting the vibe that they'd be more upset if we'd went out the League Cup earlier in the season, if we went out the Scottish Cup uh, to Dundee United, right? Then what there seems mm. to be to a European competition against far better teams, which gives you far better prestige if you win it. We have won the League Cup in Scotland, the Scottish Cup in Scotland a million times. Us... Are, are there a mentality at times that creeps in of quite small-mindedness that it's all just about being better than Rangers? Is that not just maybe, and I think the board like that, by the way, that bit first term, but for me, if you were to rank the four tournaments, 
Now, I know we were in the Conference League at the start of the season, but yeah. we are in it now. It would be the League, Conference League, Scottish Cup, League Cup. How do you rank them, though, Phil? The league is a priority, but the question I always say to people regarding that is, why do we want to win the league to get into Europe, to get into the top table of Europe? If we can't do it in the third tier, imagine what's going to happen to us if we do win this title this season, we go to the Champions League. Yeah, the money will be there and so forth. But, you know, look at, for instance, we're obviously trying to sign Jota right now. That's like a huge thing. We're always trying to convince him to stay. And I know he wasn't great last night, um, but at the same time, he might look around at that and be like, I don't fancy this. If we're just going to keep, if we go into the Champions League next season and get horsed in six group games and don't even finish third and drop into the Europa League, he might just be like, what? "No, I don't fancy that at all." So to me, Europe is always something important because it does help us attract better players and become a better team overall. Mm-hmm. So, that, but to get access to Europe, the league is the priority. Um, I would happily. Obviously, if last night didn't go down the way it did, I, I would have liked a good prolonged run in Europe. And as you say, we are still technically in the tie, albeit we're hanging on by that much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I would sacrifice the Scottish Cup. No problem. If we do, didn't win the Scottish Cup, but we won the league, we've already won the League Cup, and we had a decent run in Europe and got to the latter stages um, of the Conference League, I would be happy with that because, yeah, the title is an important one. But yeah, as I say, the when it comes to that argument, like the league, yeah, totally agree on that one, but we've got to be better in Europe. And the only way we're going to do that is by having prolonged runs in Europe and beating these type of teams and so forth. Because, yeah, the, the idea of us winning that title and going straight into the group stages next season, uh, regardless how much money may get thrown at us, is, is, yeah, a few years ago, so, what was that? The PSG so game, well, remember the one at home where they beat us 5 0? It's like, yeah, I love yeah. the big night atmosphere, but you know what I don't like? I don't like sitting there watching my team get beat 5 0 at home, <laughs> regardless how good PSG are. It's uh, it's hard to take. Yeah, but when, when you go up away or whatever, you know, you're going up into a premier competition, the more you play mm. that level, the better you get at it. Oh, well, yeah. The better players totally. you, get, you can attract and all that. You need to just, you need to keep taking the poundings, you know, you can't just go into this like, Oh, fucking, you know, oh, we got scouts, so we'll run away for that mm. competition, you know. At the end of the day, we went to the third tier and we're still getting humped. <laughs> I, know. I know. So you look at it like that. Now, for me, there's a denial, and I think folk are lying, that Neil Lennon was all right, not flavour of the month. But a lot of that was due to a shape performance in Champions League qualifiers, which we also mm. had this season, right? <laughs> yep. By the time we went out of the League Cup, it was what, October last year? Ross yeah, it was, yeah. Yep. Right? We were, at that point, I don't know how many points behind, but it wasn't crazy. In fact, nope, I'm, we sure it was fewer, nope. I'm sure it was fewer points behind than what Postacoglu was at that time. And people, uh, were calling, yeah, people were calling for Neil Lennon's head. I don't know if I froze there, by the way. Apologies if I have. Uh, no, no, maybe about 20 seconds ago, but no, you're fine now. Cool. Now, people were calling for Lennon's head after that because they couldn't believe that we've won treble after treble after treble and now we're out of domestic competition. Mm-hmm. Uh, does there not come a point where you think, I would much rather have went out of the League Cup this year, much rather have went out of the Scottish Cup and have been in that le- that conference league. Are we making excuses to do shite in Europe year after year? Has the treble almost given us a smaller, a wee man syndrome about us that I don't like? Celtics, mm-hmm. they got the romance and the history about them because we are that club, the first British team to ever win the European Cup. It's almost half of the, the magic that only Celtic can tell that story. Mm-hmm. Let's not shy away from that and now go, oh, but uh, trebles. Let's go raging if we lose to a Diddy team in Scotland. That's going to happen in the law of averages. But in yes. Europe, you can become heroes. You can become legends. Mm-hmm. And I don't... I, for me, like, for me, I don't want to be in the third tier of European competition either. Hmm. But once we're in it, I, yeah. I, I find I find apathy towards going out to it. Not for me. I think that hmm. squad's now deep enough, Phil, to be hmm. competing on the league front and the conference league front. I don't see any reason why we can't do that. Yeah, it was definitely a blown chance last night. Because I, I agree with you. I didn't I didn't necessarily think we were going to go and win it, but I thought we had a good chance of going uh, quite far in it. There was a little bit of apathy, I think, creeping in with not all fans, but 
I might I might have overheard another podcast today, and there seemed to be a bit of um I can't really want to be in that one anyway. And there seemed to be a sort of tone of like, how dare you if I make a third competition anyway? You know, there seemed to be that sort of undercurrent, and I'm like, look, man, it was a good opportunity. I think if we got by Bodo Glint, we could have done okay, but we might still we might still go out there next week, but we're going to have to be absolutely on it. And the problem you've got now is it's a good old plastic pitch, the dreaded plastic pitch. Um, Frozen conditions, I believe it's what like in the Arctic Circle, this town that we're going to. Um, so that's going to be something. Um, is it worth playing full strength team next week? Um, or just take it on the chin and go, do you know what? We made a mess. This I personally, I would play second string next week, oh! but, cause, yeah, but I think Ange would, I think, pray he'll, he'll want to play strongest team. And do you know, if it does, my worry is. If we get bad injuries because of the conditions, if we were going to a different country where it was a bit warmer and there wasn't plastic pitch, frozen mm-hmm. conditions, I'd say, okay, put out, you know, full chef team, we'll just go for it. But I think the, the signs are bad for next week and I'm worried that we could get a few injuries and that would be detrimental in the, the, the league campaign. Um, but what do you think of that one, boy, <laughs> second string or would you uh, I, full strength? I don't, I don't know how we keep guys like Ange Postacoglu in the job mm. with the caveat mm. of all you can do is the same that's been done before. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ten in a row is not going to happen under Postacoglu. Let's get no. that straight. So that's the only thing he could do domestically that's completely unique. Yeah, true, true. The, the quadruple trebles came to an end. All Postacoglu can do domestically is do what has been done before. before. For me... That is, that's not fucking what draws you to Celtic. You come to Celtic to make history. And now Glasgow CSC, always good in the chat and welcome mm. aboard the bus, mate. He says, if we went found the conference and lost GGCCV Matt O'Reilly to injury, which in hand disrupted the league and lost his out, folk would be raging. I get that. If we go out the Scottish Cup to Dundee United, folk would be raging. Either way. Because there is a mentality that creeps in. There's treble thing. Trebles aren't for everyone. Do you know what? Mm. European football's not for everyone. I think it's time for us to get Mm. back to focusing on Europe and why our standing in it has dropped so far. Anyway, we will Mm. move on from that because there's one other aspect I want to debate with you, Phil. Now, Mm -hmm. it's a striker thing. Just Jack Amakis, for me, has been wonderful in his in his time since not first yeah. half of the season, but since he came back, as he said in his own words, I'm now fully fit and I'm healthy. Judge me mm-hmm. now. He then said only last week, I came to Celtic to put Celtic the European stuff's a bonus to me. It's Celtic mm-hmm. that was a draw. So he says all the right things. I think his work rate on the pitch shows all the right signs. You then get a situation where Maida comes into the team. He's mm. not scored a glamorous goal yet, let's be honest. Although <laughs> last night, last night was the pick of the bunch. And yeah. it came on the back of arguably his poorest display. But if you say he's played poorly yet, you're banging, you know, you're banging down on the guy too hard mm. and you yep. need to give him a break. For me, there's options right now that Celtic mm. didn't have when Kyogo was a superstar. And I yep. also think that having a preference of one or the other when we only play. One striker. One striker. <laughs> you have to get asked sometimes, who would you rather? Mm-hmm. Will it be Jack and Marcus or will it be Maida? It doesn't need to be a slight on the other to have your preference. Mm-hmm. Do you feel both right now are getting unfair criticism? Or do you feel at times the perception of even having a preference, Phil, makes it look mm-hmm. like you're criticising other when you're really not? Yeah, uh, when it comes to both players, Jack Marcus and Maida, my mentality is, right, in the modern game, with them both being strikers, right, first and foremost, every fan is always going to judge them on their goal record because that's just the position they play. So the first thing you're always going to look at with a striker is goals, right? But in the modern game, a striker isn't always necessarily all about being the focal point and being the guy that puts the ball in the net. One of the great examples I can give you is the 2018 World Cup a few years ago. France won it. Olivier Giroud, yep. the number nine, played every game. He didn't even get a shot on target, never mind score a goal. But he okay. is pivotal to how Didier Deschamps wants to play. If I Ange love Postecoglou, this 
love and this. again, I'll go further back as well. In 98, again, when France won it, they had a striker up front called Givarsh. He didn't score a single goal in that tournament as well, but they won the World Cup. And it's like some players just fit into this. And managers have got an idea of how they want this player to play. Now, Giacomacchus, we've seen, they look at the Rangers game recently. He did everything right that night, bar score a goal. And it was just down to Alan McGregor just did what he does against us and had a few worldy saves. That's what the guy does. You know, he just fills him out the bag. Giacomacchus was um, so unlucky that night. And if you're a person that's into mm-hmm. the numbers, because I know there's a contingent of fans out there that are all about analytics and numbers. Mm-hmm. Well, Maida's played seven games. He scored four goals. So that's quite a good ratio as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so you can see it that way. But it's not always just about how many goals has a guy scored and you judge him on that. I say if Jackie Max is coming in and doing a job that Ange wants him to do, where he's drawing defenders out of positions, he's making it awkward for the defenders and maybe Jota and Abada are getting in behind and putting the ball in the back of the net. It's good to me. Um, aye, it's a good shout, aye. The, um, but the, my mentality always at the end of the day is, see as long as somebody in a Celtic shot puts the ball in the net, I don't really care. Um, but I think at the moment, how early it is with both men, I think last night I saw a lot of hysteria again about, oh, they're no good enough. And in Maida's case in particular, Kyogo came in and absolutely smashed it from day one. And obviously he had Hattie as well. So instantly there's this assumption that, well, Maida, we bought him from the same league. Uh, he must come in and do the exact same thing. But oh, to say he's... Um, He's doing okay in my book, um, and I say it's still yep. early doors. So yeah, just um, you know, let it play out and see how it goes. But but yeah, in terms of Jack and Marcus, I say he might, you know, he might not be an out and out goal scorer as it turns out. But if he's doing other things right, like I say, roughing up defenders and uh, putting the you know put, making space for others, then so be it. And if Ange wants it that way, it, that's fine. But yeah, when Kyogo comes back, I think when Kyogo and Maida get a chance to link up together, I think you're going to see um. A better side than Maida. I think he'll really come into his own when he goes alongside him. Um, See, I think, point. I think, I think another side. I mm. think, I think Jack and I can say Kyogo will be a joke. Mm. I think, I think Kyogo, the big man, little man combination. I think they can see that. I think mm. Maida is so used to being this lone furrow up front and chasing. I know Kyogo showed the same desperation for lost causes, but I think Kyogo, from what I've seen so far. It's just slightly on a different wavelength from Maida. I think Maida's work ethic and that can't be questioned. I think, again, yeah. four goals and seven, like you say. So I'm not going to patronise that this guy can't play football. It's nothing like that. Yeah. Do I think Kyogo's maybe just a wee bit of a standard above? Well, one cost 4.6 million, one cost 1.7 million. In fact, mm. we got a loan to start with. So yeah. I think there's, there's a reason how you value players, right? Mm. It's not a slight on Maida. I think the thought of Kyogo, if we're going to ever do this two on top, which rightfully said by students of the doctor, two up top, what witchcraft is that? <laughs> I think Jack and Marcus and Kyogo is chaos with finesse. I think yep. it could be fun. I think there could be a yep. lot of fun with that partnership. Now, I think a lot is made out of, I'm going to say it about both Maggie and uh, Jack and Marcus, they don't always look like Kyogo, for example, they don't always have mm. that wonderful first time touch, that real mm. finesse, that you know, like you like a Tom Rogic slipper. They don't definitely have a shot of those, his slippers yeah. anytime, right? But what they both bring is a work ethic, a leading from mm. the front example that you need yeah. the rest of the team to buy into. Mm. And I think off the ball last night, Maida for his sins made a lot of very clever off the you know off the ball runs that yeah. were never picked up. Yeah. And had been mm-hmm. picked up, he looks a world in. Jacques when he comes on, I still think caused a bit of mayhem. I'm not saying it was his mm-hmm. finest half hour, yeah. but what he does is gives us this other dimension that we've not seen enough of. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I know there's a huge region debate about it. Um, but for me, I just think that we've got three strikers now with the first mm-hmm. half we had one. And now we're going to eventually start getting our favourites or the one we think, in our own humble opinion, should start ahead of the other. Let's not turn it into it's a whole, you know, assassination of, Mm. you know, whatever player we're not saying. I find that stuff a wee bit, do you know what? I find it a wee bit school ground, playground stuff, you know, like fucking get a grip. 
if I think Jack and Akis maybe would have started the game better than Maeda, so I think Maeda's shite. I mean, like this two year old part, do you know what I mean? I yeah. think actually, right now, up front's looking healthier than mm. it has. Now, Conor McCann says when we had two up t- top last night, the shape was all over the place. You could argue the third goal comes from it, but see if that's the case, Connor, then that's far too then one dimensional from Celtic to only be able mm. to play one game. We are a mm. team that dominates our league. Season in, season out, even when we don't win it, the amount of games are going to dominate possession, dominate uh, our wins percentage. It's crazy. So mm. if it's totally alien for Celtic to be able to play two up top, or it's experimental almost to play two up top, then I mm. find that a wee bit, Phil, I find that a wee bit rigid in your managerial style. And I'm not going to pile on Ange here. No, but totally. for me, to only be able to able to play one, one up top, Celtic, Nah, not having it. Yeah. But you were talking as well there just about some of the runs Maida made. There was a passage of play last night in the first half where Abada was in acres of space for ages. And it was just a case of there was a lot of like passing Uh around at the back. And from where I sit, because I'm in the lower Jockstein and then looking up towards that end of the park, and you could see Abada in acres of space. And it's just a case of if one of the defenders just looks up and pings a long ball up to him. He's in there, and it just is like they just passed it. Eventually, went out left to Jota, um, and I think the, the play broke down really quickly. But it's just a case of it's not and in the Maida's fault. No Maida, you're saying he's making good runs last night. It's not his fault if he's getting into the right places and somebody's just not picked up on it. And I say the same way like Abada last night as well. There was a point where he was in the right place. It's just not his fault that nobody picked him out. You know. Yeah. I mean, the, 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 in comes by Moria. We beat St. John's to play 3 5 2. What are you talking about? Um, that's the thing. So, two up front, we have played and it's worked. And for me now, when we played St. John's with that, it was a bad up top. Am I right? With Kyogo? It was. That was the empty stadium game, wasn't it? Aye, the empty yeah, yeah, yeah. Game. Yep. And right I, don't, in the middle. I don't think Jack Caracas was back by then, was he? Uh, Kyogo started no, the game, went off injured, and then. A uh, young lad came on. It wasn't Ben Doak. It was I can't remember his name, but one of the youngsters came on. He was drafted in from Moffitt. the B team. Moffat was it him? I, I, no, it wasn't Moffat. No, I can't remember. It's made up. Somebody uh, in the chat will definitely put who it was. If you expect <laughs> me to remember Christmas time, you're off your fucking nut, <laughs> nah, right? But the <laughs> thing is, three five two or two up top. See if it is going to be completely alien to to what Celtic are trying to do. For me, I don't get that because there's too many games that we need to mm. go on the front foot. That I was yep. at the Livingston game, for example, um, and it was tough watch. There's been other games yeah. since then where you've went, there is other ways to unlock the door. You, plan A mm. is plan A. Plan B can't always be do plan A again. Um, <laughs> but I take the point, I mean, on board, that we've, we've played yeah. two up top. But for me... There has been instances where Ange has shown a wee bit of flexibility, and he has, and what Brown Warrior says is correct. There has been those moments, but... Um, you mentioned Livingston there. That is a fixture that is looming in the distance ominously. A trip to Almondvale coming up. So we better have a plan for that one because uh, I'm sick to the back teeth of dropping points to them. I really am. Well, so that's hopefully. true. Yep. In the here and now, though, it's Dundee mm-hmm. at home on Sunday. I think that's a perfect opportunity. Yep. Like, see if there was going to be a negative vibe, you know, you know that way, like a virus. <laughs> Poor choice of words. But spreads... <laughs> And, like, say we had Livingston away this Sunday. Fuck me, man, after that game. It would be like, you know you know where I'm going with this, though? It mm-hmm. would feel like the hangovers lasted a few more extra days, mm-hmm. even yep. before the games, even before a ball's been kicked. Dundee have appointed an absolute redneck of a manager. I'm going to put my neck on the line on that one. Mark McGee's yeah. an embarrassment. He's shy, mm-hmm. in my yep. opinion. He's not even going to be on the... On the, the, the sidelines the for those six matches. Yep. I mean, I am not convinced that a relegation threat in Dundee come to paradise should be something we... I, thought, I think it's the perfect tonic for us. I think we go there. We go home, Sorry, we go there. We welcome them. And it's the game to just get the confidence built up again. And we go for the jugular in it. What's your take on this? This is the perfect fixture. Would you agree with that on the back I'll, of what was one a one-off disappointing night and what has mm-hmm. been a sensational 2020, uh, 2022? 
Yep. No, I would agree. Dundee's exactly a home game as well. Um, you're totally right. If it was Livingston that was uh, away or something, then yeah, we'd probably have a couple of problems for you. But, but no, this is exactly the type fixed one because what was it, start of the season? 6 0. Um, what's going to midnight? Jeez, oh. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, but yeah, it's. It, <laughs> I'm quite confident. I don't want to put my neck too much on the line because I have got a bit of fear of getting clipped or something somewhere and ending up on Kerry Fail, you know, that type of stuff. But realistically, we should be beating Dundee. We should have no problems on Sunday. So I would expect us to bounce back pretty well. Um, But yeah, I've got no real issues with that one at all. So yeah, I'm totally on the same boat with you there. Um, We should, we should, um, there should be no European hangover with that one. Hi, but well, I think it's the perfect game for us. And I just think, yeah. as well, do you know what? Celtic at the start of the season were almost pissing me off. The, the you know the the highs and the lows. You know, they remember the six mm. 0 wins they were getting at home, and then yeah. looking so so vulnerable, so frail. Mm. Now, yes, if I won bad result, but I've never seen Celtic in the, you know since the the winter break look look like they've had so much swagger. And our domestic results since probably just two years ago, to be honest, because <laughs> yep. that is the level we've been at. And I think we come back with that. We've took a bloody nose, right? End mm. of story on Thursday. And yes, we have to w- reflect on it. We need to learn from it, etc. Mm. But I also would tell Ange now, see if that's going to affect you, like going into another game or roll over into the mm. next few fixtures, then this isn't the club for you, you know? Yep. I've got a feeling Ange's got a mentality where, yeah, it was shit, and I'm going to pull every one of you up for the reasons mm-hmm. for it being shit. But see, the next yep. game, it's a clean slate. You know mm. the standards. You know how I want you to play. We're going to mm-hmm. dust all that off and go straight back to doing what we're doing. And here, guys, before we go out, is the, I don't know how many wins we've had in the league so far this season, 20 or something like that. Here's how we won those 20. Go watch the highlights of those. Let's get back into our mentality, yeah? And I think that is what we're going to do. Because, I mean, Monty is wanting extra time tonight. I mean, look, the quiz is still to come, mate. I mean, we've all got beds to go. I've got got work tomorrow. Um, uh, I always always work a Saturday end, so I'm not at the games. Um, Monty, I'll try and I'll try and be on a post-match pitch sometime in the future if that keeps yeah. me happy. If he wants me back on, then oh, yeah. we'll, have you on, <laughs> we'll have you on post-match pitch. And do you know what? Every double doing guest I've had on so far has shown an appetite to come on post-match pitch, and I think it's quite a good knock-on effect. You come on the double doing show, and it's a it's it's a pathway that Stephen yeah. Welsh would be probably proud of. You know, you come on <laughs> yeah. the double doing, and you get on to the, you get on to do a PMP. Anyway, Martin James Mainland comes on, top lad, and he says a bounce back is on the cards. This group of players know how to react quickly as of late. Last night was just a bad result, but it's not a reflection of our season to date. It's just a case of our boxer getting knocked down, and I expect we could perform much better after that wake-up call. I get that. Mm. I get that. And I think that is exactly the way it should be. Monty says, fuck the quiz. I'm not having that one here. <laughs> Monty, I mean you get on well, but you're Monty. in the order. He must have your number or sign. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know oh, no, I've, got, I've got to do the quiz, man. I've got to. Uh, got to be done, man. <laughs> I think there are other talking points that we've got. I don't think we've got any. Um, aye, but we're ready for the quiz, mate. It's that oh, time. Um, I do, do you know what? Phil, it's got to yeah. an hour before we've done the quiz, right? Oh, I think God. you've got... So a, has... I think I think you've got away with this more than most. Sometimes it's been after 45 minutes because it's started. So maybe that's kudos to yourself, mate. And wow, I, know you've I can't done... even believe that's been an hour, mate. I cannot believe that. <laughs> I, I, well, what I'm going to say on that, Monty, uh, uh, Monty, geez, oh, because <laughs> you are obviously the same person. I know it's you that's tweeting in now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but what I will say is, this is the beauty of the Boise bus that makes yeah. us unique. And it's yep. not about competing with the rest because I don't go to fans, press conferences and all this bollock, me writing notes down. It's not my thing. And I respect all those who do it, by the way. Um, mm-hmm. I don't try and act like match of the day like other posts. And I don't think that I know more about Celtic than anyone else in the world, which I'm afraid a lot of them fucking do and talk about standards when they've got volunteers on their show. 
giving them hours after hours after hours and free, mm. do, you know, free donating their time, freely donating their time, yet getting text messages going, our standards must improve. Actual run up your own ribs. You know, you're a, you're like a, poor, a poor man's dead line them, you know what I mean? Now, <laughs> what I like, what I like is getting guys that you feel who've clearly put in a lot of comments over the, the weeks and months that the Boise bus has been revved mm. up. And I'm going, well, you'll work on the show, mate, because I've got not a better opinion than any Celtic fan. Any Celtic fan who can mm. articulate themselves like to the equivalent of being able to read Biff and Chip will be able to come on the Boise bus and, mm. and be able to talk football with you because I think that's the right way. That's the right way. That yeah. is the only, that is the connection that I'm trying to make with the viewer, the fan, that no one else mm. seems to do. You can yeah. put, uh, I could get by one of those silly wee muffs to put on my microphone and it says, the Boise bus on it. But at the end of the day, my opinion is still just a solitary opinion. Yep. It doesn't make me more in the know than anyone else. I don't kid on, I've got contacts at Celtic. I mean, you come on, I want to treat you like we've just met in the pub and we have a banter. All that was yep. missing, mate, was a pint in front of us and a packet of dry roasted nuts for me. But it's up to you, whatever kind you prefer. Now, <laughs> some vinegar crisps for me, mate. <laughs> oh, good choice, good choice. Oh, yeah, choice. yeah definitely. The rust dropping the pipe bombs, boy, said the moment. Big time, man. Like, Love I'm it. Not, I, I mean, the thing is, at the moment, if I see my name getting fucking used by that twat on Twitter, right? <laughs> you know, obviously the photo yeah. must still be on his site. Do you know what I mean? Because nobody's mm. buying his shirts. That you know, why not put in one of the jerseys? See how well that sells. <sighs> Before he wants to talk about rating numbers and that, nobody gives a fuck, mate. Honestly, the, the clues in the name. A first. fan, a fan podcast. So this yeah, is a fan but, podcast. You bring on fans. So yeah, say clues in the name. That, and that is the way it should be. But anyway, Correct. I know folk are saying about podcasts, Rich, but I love the other podcast. Ryan one one eight that out is just yeah, like Ryan. one of these guys I look at and I go, yeah. he's sound. He just talks yeah. sense. He doesn't give a fuck. I respect Aye. that fact. I wish I was whatever age Ryan one one eight was, and you mm. have a computer worked. I'd be fucking brilliant at doing what he does. But I think he's class at it, and I think as well right. I watch endless cells. And I watch guys that have been doing it for over a year now, and I've mm. watched them grow from, I'm not going to say nervy, but maybe just very humble people to that show having so much character now amongst them all. They they changed host this year and it was quality, do you know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. And I just think there's room for everyone yeah. and every angle, but I want to create room. The only vacuum I think there is in the pods is none of them get just normal viewers onto the show. And if any of them try it now, they're bumping my idea. I'm not like fucking super scoreboard, <laughs> do you know what I mean? But you get one on at a time and there's no vetting process, do you know what I mean? Nope. If you want to come on and talk with Boise, I'm all for it. Right. And that is what we'll keep doing. And we're the only mm. folk who do that, do you know what I mean? Right. And having experienced it tonight, to anyone in the chat that's thinking about it, definitely do it because it's been class. It definitely has been. Uh, I say I can't believe we've hit an hour. That's incredible. That's flew Aye. by. <laughs> Astounding. Oh, brilliant. Aye, brilliant. Let's do the double doing quiz, right? I'm going to get it, my, uh, my personally designed stopwatch that I've got. Uh, thanks. Okay. And by the way, football.com are our main sponsors, but obviously, um, Windows. Clock, the clock app. It's also my second sponsor. Uh, so a big shout out to Bill Gates and the like for uh, helping us with the with the stopwatch. Now we will reset the time because the time was diabolical last week. Uh, <laughs> we will we will share the old stop clock before we start the questions. Um, uh, there's Conor McCann. I, mean, I love that. He would recommend going on to anyone. That's who Definitely. you want. Definitely. Anyone who does, honest, I've got no airs of graces about it. Like, I'm not mm. here to make it difficult. They'll go, Oh, well, you need to be of a certain standard. Get to fuck. Just come on if you want to come on. Let's talk football. Let's talk Celtic. Right. If I'm in the pub, it's all we would do for 50 minutes before you bought me a pint. Any ah, well, I like, kind of the pint. Uh, <laughs> if I met any of in the pub, that would be it. Let's be honest. So <laughs> I'm eased yep. by all that stuff, man. You know. Right. Let me try and fucking make out that oh, because I've been on another podcast and now I do my own one, my opinion means a lot. Does it fuck? 
absolutely. <laughs> oh, I just, I just enjoy talking about it, and it's, I've enjoyed your company, Phil. I can't deny that. Cheers, man. Brilliant, mate. Thanks. Thanks, but, man. Anyway. Terry one just put up any nice comments. I appreciate it, fags. I've seen them popping up a couple of times. It's thrown me off a wee bit because I've been in a train of thought and seen it and been like, oh, thanks. So, no, thank you. I appreciate it. Well, I, you can get all that out the way though now because it is oh, time aye. for your, your, your doom and gloom, mate. Let's do it, man. It's time to play double doom. I'll need to assume the deep thought position when it's sitting like that, you know, deep thought. <laughs> so, oh. the double doom quiz. Now, you should all know the rules by now because I clearly do. Mm -hmm. Now, if you complete the quiz in under a minute, it's 50 points. If you mm -hmm. complete the quiz between one and two minutes, it is 40 points. If it's between two and three minutes, you still get a wee bonus 20 points, you know, and a wee rub in the heat, right? Lifelines, mm -hmm. double down. You have to call it before I've read out the question. Now, each question you get more points for because they increase in difficulty. When I say mm -hmm. question three, if you shout double down, You'll get double doing you'll get double points if you get it right. If you don't, you've lost your double doing lifeline. Back doing just means you quickly skip that question and move on to mm. the next. You might do yeah. that if you're trying to save time. And flip it means you get a completely different question. It could be of a question one difficulty, it could be of a mm. question six difficulty. Do you know what I mean? Yep. Yep. You got a hang of it, Phil. May I've got the hang of it? Yeah, I if you'd ask me to recite the rules there, yeah, I have I've understood, I've understood See? it. Yeah. Thank you. You're going to ask me questions, I've got to right. answer them correctly. That's the layman's terms of it. Simple as that. So, yeah. <laughs> it is, though, mate. It absolutely <laughs> is the layman's terms of it. Right, yeah. without further ado, let's play Double Down. Okay. Question one. Who scored Celtic's first goal against Wraith Rovers last weekend? It was Liam Scales. Question two. Name the Celtic player who has represented the Greek national team six times. Uh, George's Jackamakis, I'll go for. Question number three. Who was the general manager when Joseph Vengloss was appointed Celtic boss? It was Jock Brown. Question number four. Which club did Tony Mowbray leave to become Celtic manager in 2009? West Bromwich Albion. Question five. Which shirt number did Mark Antoine Fortuny wear for Celtic? Number 10. Question number six. Think, mate, what you've not shouted yet. The last time. Oh, I think of your lifeline. No, no, think I've, of your I've, lifeline. I've, your lifeline. Doubled in. Ah, oh, that's it. I've not read it yet. <laughs> Name the year. Name the team and the scoreline the last time Celtic lost the Scottish Cup final. I'm going to go for... So you've doubled down, yes? Yes. 2002, we lost 3 to the Rangers. I'm going to go for that one. Stop the timer. Stop the yeah. timer, boys. Stop the timer. Stop the timer. Yeah. Stop the timer. The double down thing just completely went out of my head there. Um, yeah. Sorry about that. Mate, <laughs> mate, 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 mate. I think, I think you just got a perfect score. Oh, no way. Ah, I was, I, do you know, see, see the Jack I, and Marcus like, one? That's the one I'm really unsure about because it's either him or Barkas has got six caps sneakily. I that, was the point. that was the <laughs> okay. point. That was the point. Okay. That was the point. Mate, Barkas. Uh, right, we'll just go through them as we okay. always do professionally. Yeah. And we'll total up. I, I have a hunch that. I owe you a million pounds. That's kind of how I feel right now. I feel like there has to be some sort of jackpot that I owe him if he's got You know, you do right. the Chris Tarrant thing with a cheque and go, but we don't want to give you that. Pull it away from uh, me well, when we reach for it. <laughs> I, I'm too buzzing, mate, that you might have done it. Now, who scored Celtic's first goal against Ray Throvers last weekend? You said Liam Scales. Wonder goal, yeah. It's five, five points, mate. Out of five. <laughs> Next up, you said name the Celtic player. Who has represented? Oh, we'll, oh, we'll sort the, uh, we'll sort the camera. Stop the screen. There we okay. go. Name the Celtic player who has represented the Greek national team six times. You were supposed to say. I, I said Georges Jakimakis. I. You was... were supposed to say. Oh, um, Barkas. Barkas. Yeah, that's who I thought you would go to. You said. Oh, Jakimakis. right, that was. I said Jakimakis. Said... Yeah. 
and you were spot on, mate. So it's, it's, it's 10 points. Oh. Okay. No, right. you were supposed to say Barkas because that's where I thought everyone's oh, mind. Right, 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 everyone's right, okay. mind's going to go. Greek, Greek international. Yeah. That bastard Jackamakis. That's what I see. Jackamakis was the first one that came to my mind. But no, then Jack the last second. Barkas. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought everyone would think Greek international. They'll think of the flop that was Vasilis Barkas. But no, you got it right. Jackamakis has six caps. Barkas, 13 times he's been capped. By the Greek national team. I and mean, I wouldn't give my cap down, <laughs> honestly, the Kimmy Club. Honestly, absolutely hopeless. Anyway, question number three. Who was general manager when Joseph Vingloss was appointed Celtic boss? Now, Jock Brown, remember, appointed Vim Janssen. Mm -hmm. Jock Brown left Celtic in 1998, the year Vingloss was appointed. Mm. But he left Celtic in like November '98, so you were absolutely yep. right again. He did indeed appoint Vengloss. Oh shit! Yes. Oh shit! <sighs> Question number four. You're meant to. Can I tell you the answer you're meant to give? You're meant to say Middlesbrough here, because that's who he went to, that's and that's who he's heavily associated with. Yes. Yeah. Yes. He, he was relegated by West Brom. And appointed mm -hmm. by Celtic. Because yeah. with again, you see when you look back at that, that is a bath. And he cost, I think he cost three million pounds in compensation mm -hmm. as well. It was very publicly known. He was a second choice behind Owen Coyle as well, who knocked his back Gosh. publicly. Yes. And Peter Lowell sitting there going, Oh yeah, this is a guy we wanted. And it's like, well, it's clearly not, because you know, you wanted uh Owen Coyle, and he very publicly was like, nah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know what bill it be dodged, to be honest with you. Mm, uh, true. We get to number five. What shot number did Mark Antoine Fortuny win out? He was there at Celtic, really, for a season. If, yeah. if And he was out the team after half a season, really, once Robbie Keane had joined. So I'm thinking he would have been a long number. You said number 10. 10. Yeah. You're fucking right again, mate. Same I'm good with squad numbers. Score. I believe it was David Logue that was on and said he's got a thing for squad numbers. I'm the same way. I've got OCD with squad numbers. Like, I just good at remember them. I get really annoyed when I see like goalkeepers wearing like number four and stuff like that. And this yeah, modern day no, world, right. I'm just like, no, <laughs> stop it. <laughs> no, I agree with you, mate. Mm. I agree with you. So, question number six. Now, I'm going to be honest, Ooh. I'm a bit disappointed. I'll tell you why. For a man who says they knew the quiz, I, know. I was doing so well. You should be telling me double doing. I, I was uh, so and deep I in thought. The fact <laughs> I had to encourage that out here will cheese off the leaderboard, if I'm honest. And that might count against you if someone good, else man. was to do as well as you did. Because the fact of the matter is, I said name the year, I said name the team, and I said name the scoreline. You got it completely fucking right. A hundred percent right. And that... Wow. That is what you call a perfect score. So, five points for the first one. Ten points for the second takes you up to 15. Twenty points for the third takes you up to 35. Thirty points for the fourth takes you up to 65. Forty points for the fifth takes you up to what? 145? No. Um... No, 105. Oh, my maths is so shit, man. <laughs> 5, 10, 35, 65, 105. Then, by the time question six is done and you've doubled it, 205. Then we look at the stock clock <laughs> and you got it 1 minute 30, which gives you, let's look at the stock clock times. As I say, I've got them all, I've got them all listed. There's another 40 points. Two, four, five. Catch him if you can. That's the, uh, you know, all, <laughs> the only way to beat you is do it in under a minute. Oh my god, <laughs> I'm, I'm stunned, absolutely stunned. Like, um, oh wow, uh, yeah, that, that I, all episode I've been feeding it, but my god. <laughs> Wow, I'll be that honest. is incredible. Well, now, I I speak you know, with my brother, as you know, who joins me mm. in the Monday Club every week. Yep. 
I've asked him about the recent week's question. I know Stephen didn't do it as well. Great lad. Mm-hmm. Um, recently. Uh, uh, Jonathan says, I think the standard of the quiz has been pretty consistent. He says, mm-hmm. I don't think there's been harder weeks or easier weeks. He goes, I think it's... And, and tonight's another example of that. But 245 doesn't mean it's over. It means you would have to answer all six correct. Mm-hmm. You would have to do it in under a minute and you can still beat Phil McGinley. So all is not lost. But Phil, 245 points. Just tell me how you're feeling right now. Absolutely ecstatic. <laughs> Stunned <laughs> and ecstatic, mate, honestly. Like my first thing, for, first of all, since I wanted to get all the questions right, that was like my first thing. I don't want to try and get it wrong because I'm a bit of a like, um, trivia nut and stuff like that. And I was like, oh, please. Um, they just don't get it wrong, but my God, uh, that is that is astounding. That nice to <laughs> what? <laughs> oh wow, man, that that's way way better than I thought. So yeah, chuffed to bits, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Edward Davis, this don't tell us you want to make the world a better place or end world poverty. Listen, he's not Bob Geldof. Do you know what I mean? That, no. that cunt's been Bob Geldof's been dining out, and I don't like Mondays longer than Ethiopia has been dining out on nothing, do you know what I mean? Remember <laughs> Russell Brand said that uh, before yep. the round to, uh, to the wall that was brilliant. But anyway, <laughs> that was sensational, Phil. Huh? It's been a brilliant night on the Double you, Dune show, by the way. I, I know we've ran quite late, but do you want the answers to my trivia from the very start? Let's do it. So, remind us of the questions okay. again. We'll just why don't so you give first... me a go at it? Give me a go okay. at it. I'm right, ready, no worries, man. Man. I'm ready. Right, yeah, okay. I, don't don't peek at the I chat mean. because the chat will start putting the answers in. So try not to peek at the chat. Okay. Right. Okay. So the first question was at uh, the World Cup. Celtic um, have had six goal scorers at World Cups. They were contracted to Celtic when they scored. Can you name the six players? Henrik Larson. Yes. Two thousand two. You Melby? No. Okay. You're not a million miles off with that one, no. I'll say that. You've hit the post there. Uh, Valharan? No. 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 Uh, think, think. I'm just being silly here. Think, Boise. Nationalities. Think, son. Nationalities. Uh, were contracted Celtic at the time of their... They were scoring. contracted at the time they scored in the World Cup, yeah. Mm. Petrov? No. Oh, I'm trying to those smaller countries. Do you know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. you're in the bigger nations. Mm-hmm. The bigger nations, it's harder. Um. Nice Welsh, no, no. Nice Portuguese, nice Spanish, nice French, nice Belgian, clearly. Hmm. This is hard. So it's got to be smaller countries, man. Mm-hmm. I've only got Henrik, but you said Henrik I had the post. So You've definitely had the post on one of them, I would say, because, yeah, you're not a million miles off in terms of... How far the, back does it go? I'll tell you what, I'll give you one for free, because there's one that is a 1950s one, but it is a player that played over oh, 200 games for Celtic, right? Oh, okay, right. So, so the one that did... Do you, want, do you want that one just out the way, just so it's ah, done? Yeah, 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 I'm not having Okay, that the one that scored in the 50s was Bobby Collins, who played over 200 times for Celtic, but the other... Five are all from 1998 onwards. The other five, oh, Craig Bowley. Craig Bowley's one, yes. And the other ones are 1998 onwards. John Collins still contracted Celtic. He was at Monaco when he scored that goal against Brazil. He was. And Tom Boyd doesn't call you because that was an own goal because Tom Boyd was a Celtic player. So that's since goal. then, that's my. So since Peter then, man. oh, yeah. What? What? Van Hoydonk scored at the 98 World Cup. Did not. He was still at Celtic. He was at Celtic. Celtic, but he was at Nottingham Forest then, if that was the case, because he's I definitely did score. He oh, left he did in 97. Sure he did. Aye. So you've got Bowley, you've got Larson. I say Bobby Collins, we'll just give you that one for free because we'd be here all night. Right. We'd be on your mo- to midnight go. like Monty wanted. Three more to go, though. Three more to go. Three more to go. Fuck you, mm-hmm. man. Not happy with that <laughs> shit. See, I'm changing uh, the game, mate, for guests coming on. Changing the game. Yeah, yeah, Johansson? No. Norway no made the World Cup, no? No. Ooh, ooh. And they were contracted Celtic at the time. Contracted oh, Celtic yeah. at the time. Um, 
No, Van Dyke's not one. I'm trying to think. Oh, <laughs> I'm absolutely raging, by the way. Samaras? Yes, Samaras is one of them. He was leaving <laughs> at the end of June 2014, oh, but he was still a Celtic him. player when he scored at the 2014 World Cup for Greece. Love him. Georgia Samaras. Would you like a clue uh, for one of them? Or no Jason clues? Denier. No, Jason Denier, not. Fuck. No. Lustig? Not Lustig, no. See, you're saying no, like there's another Swede, and I'm like, Mastorovich? Nope. See, you said you're that the post. Yep. How you're many in the right. You're in the right part of the world. Picky. No. Picky. No. Not been no. Nope. Ah, oh, the struggle is real, man. How many? Oh. How many? What? Two to go. You've got two to go. Would you like Tell a clue? Uh, yeah, two. I want the years of both. That's it. Nineteen ninety-eight and two thousand and six. That's good. That's good. 98 would mean Mark Reaper? Yes, Mark Reaper scored for Denmark oh, against South Africa. <laughs> the 1998 World yeah. Cup, Mark Reaper. Yep, so you've got one more to go. I'm quite surprised this is the last one. I thought this would be one of the first. More obvious? Oh, shit. Oh, yes, very obvious, yes. Uh, I don't like that. 98? <laughs> yep. Oh, well, 2006. Like... This one's 2006. Oh, 2006. You've got the 98 one. The Reaper was the 98 one. You got him. Um... Sorry, 2006, and it's and it's relatively obvious. It's very obvious. Mm. Nakamura. Yes, Shunsuke Nakamura scored in the 2006 World Cup. The clue I was going to give you was you've got him on your current chat manager. See if oh. you're playing on the channel. Yeah. Right. I, I mean, I'm... oh, that's a good clue. That is a good clue. Yeah. I'm looking and, at the uh, comments. Uh, uh, Everyone's saying good day. Everyone's saying good day. I'm glad. I think I did not bad. Was that was that bad? Guy. No, you done fine. They were no, hard. You, you got, they were hard. Yeah, you got them all. I didn't have to give you too many obvious clues, but no, you got them. And the other one that I'd asked at the start was there's eight English towns and cities that um, Celtic have played competitive games in. Not friendlies, competitive games. Can you name the English towns and cities? I'd How say many? five of them are pretty obvious. Eight. How many? Eight overall. English since when? Ever. Um, ever. Ever. Manchester. Yeah. Yes. Liverpool. Yes. What's Blackburn? Is that a town or is it like, like Blackburn? Like a... You've got towns and cities, either or. Right, yeah, I was gonna say Lancashire, I don't even know what that is. Um, <laughs> that's a that's a county. Uh, competitive, competitive. Uh, London? Yes, we played Arsenal in a Champions League that's qualifier it. under Mowbray. That's right, they pumped mm. us. Did yep. Donati score a belter in that? Donati did score a good goal in that one, yes. Aye. And, and then he got sold like the next day. Yeah, and then Eduardo, the striker, the took a really bad dive. Hmm? Aye. Hmm. Um, who else though, man? So you've got four more to go. And it's not like London just covers the whole of London, right? Yeah, it does, yeah. Right, okay. Newcastle? No. Leeds? Yes, 1970, European Cup. We Very played Leeds. Good. Mm. Nottingham. Nottingham. We played Nottingham in the 83 yep. UEFA Cup. Brian Clough's Nottingham. Yep. So they're uh, the last two. Uh, These are always the last two. Always are. Two stinky ones. Birmingham. No. Because Villa were good then. His thing, because you're saying a city or a town. Yeah, set your towns in England. Yep. Uh, Leicester? No. No, I get that. I get that. Shake guess. There's a shake guess, Boise. <laughs> Honestly, I'm an idiot sometimes. I actually does my own nut in that. It's just a terrible <laughs> guess. Um, think, man. I can think. <laughs> the Midlands doesn't count. That's a region. That's a region. Fuck. All I'll say with these two is there's one where you're going to have to think a bit outside the box and another one where it is an absolute stinker of a town. Cardiff? No, that would be Wales. That was outside the box. That was outside the box. That was, yeah. 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 I, get my, I get my logic there. Yep. I get my logic. 
Things outside the box. Things outside the box. Hull City? Hull? No. Nah, they wouldn't have been in Europe. They wouldn't have been in Europe. I was just thinking it's mm. outside the box. Tyneside? Like Middlesbrough? No. <laughs> I'm struggling, man. Yeah. Do you want the answers then? Do you just want them straight up? Or oh, a clue, a clue. I'm sorry, clue. Wait the fuck. Okay, oh, I need to be careful oh. I don't offend anybody in case I'm not still living in this town, but see, if you think of one of the most Brexity towns in England, what's one of the first ones? And I'll tell you this right now, their team is currently in the English Premier League. A really Brexity town. Like, again, I apologise if anyone lives here. <laughs> fuck it, who cares? Um, <laughs> no <Millwall? laughs> Ah, they'd fall under London. I don't know, man. I, I don't. I don't know who votes. Nah, I don't. Do you want, do you want it? All right. I want that it one. Was Burnley. Celtic Burnley, played Burnley right. in the nineteen seventies in a, a very short-lived uh, cup, a cross-border cup between English and Scottish teams called the Anglo-Saxon Cup. They played Burnley. Class. They could beat Burnley beaters as well. They, they beat us in that one. Um, the only Scottish wow. team ever win the trophy is St. Mirren. There you go. That's a weird fact. Who and the last the one, the last one is the real outside the box thing. It's in the, a bit of a stinker as well. It's like the, the sort of trick one. Well, it's still going to be like fucking Jersey United. You know what I mean? It's like they've got mm. a team. You know what I mean? The Guernsey, you know, Sharks, whatever. You know what I mean? It's not like they're going to have a team. <laughs> Um, but there is one that's just like off the coast. I'm guessing like it's an island or something. No, it's not an island. No, no, I don't know. All right, Bournemouth. No, not Bournemouth. No, begins with that letter though. Begins with the letter B. I said Burnley. I'm Burnley. Fucking. Oh, I don't know. Man. See if I told you that the team from the town plays in the Scottish Football League pyramid, but they're over the border. Berwick Rangers, no. Berwick. <laughs> Berwick is in England, even though the team play in the Scottish. Yeah, I knew Football that. League. Yeah, so that's the outside the box thing. But well, how like, were they? How were they playing? Oh, right. Played them in so a Scottish Cup game. Ah, oh, you bastard. Uh, competitive games. Ah, oh, you're right. That's very yeah, good. Yeah. Very good. Thank Phil, you. what a joy it's been to have you on the show tonight, buddy. That was good fun. Good enjoy be on. Good. They go, Monty, we gave you an hour and a half, mate. Couldn't make it to midnight, but an hour and a half. That is long. That is a (laughs) a long long. one. That is long. (laughs) Phil, I'm just going to play some music. Hang on, mate. We'll get a wee catch-up after the show as well. Listen, (laughs) everyone in the comments, that is is what makes the show. That was a brilliant eye for the night by everyone. Um, I've had great fun um, on the Boise bus, and I'm sure most of you have as well, if not all of you. Um, we We did a show tonight on... We did it on Twitter, we did it on Facebook, we did it on the old YouTube as normal. Thanks to everyone who, for watching and contributing. We will be back Sunday, Dundee at home. I'm feeling pretty gals about it, we'll see how it goes. Um, Phil, anything you want to add before you go, mate? Nothing at all, just again, thanks for having me, thanks for everyone in the comments. It's been a brilliant That's night, welcome, thoroughly enjoyed it. Brilliant, no worries at all. We'll see you all later. This has been the Boise Bus, the Double Dune Show. We will be back. On Sunday, see you later. Some of his comments about me deliberately trying to to cause contra- controversy. Well, I work in the media now, and you've got someone sitting there next to you who's an embarrassment to the media profession. He's an apologist. He's a charlatan. He- <laughs>